a lot of these uh, false interpretations and misinterpretations um, and false uh, doctrines um, about Christ's um, second coming, a lot of it is rooted in um, Jesuit teaching. Um, you see, back in the day, the Roman Catholic Church, they hired two Jesuit um, priests to teach something called the Counter-Reformation. Okay. Here's what the Bible says. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Ye shall know them by their fruits. In Matthew 15 verses 8 and 9 says this. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. So the Bible warns us about false teaching and that these false teachers are going to to lead people astray and lead people away from keeping the Ten Commandments. And instead of um, leading people to keep the Ten Commandments, they're going to lead people to keep the commandments of men. Um, basically, traditions of men. Commandments of men. And so that's why a lot of people nowadays, they don't keep the Ten Commandments. Even a lot of Christians nowadays, they only keep Nine Commandments, not all ten of uh, God's commandments. It's because there's a lot of false teachers out there. So, again, like I said, um, the Roman Catholic Church, they hired two Jesuit priests to make up this thing called the Counter-Reformation, where um, they made up a false, two false interpretations of Bible prophecy. Two of them. Futurists' point of view and Preterists' point of view. There was basically one church all throughout the Middle Ages, which was the Church of Rome. There was also the Eastern Orthodox Church, but principally the Church of Rome was the main church during that time. This church then became the universal church, adopting pagan beliefs and heathenism and entered into apostasy, which led to the Protestant Reformation. Christians led by John Wycliffe, Jan Hus, and Martin Luther, amongst many others, began to split away from this mother church because they had realized that the Church of Rome was teaching false doctrines and many were actually identifying this mother church as the Antichrist, which is the little horn of Daniel 7 and the beast power of Revelation 13. The Church of Rome wanted to do something to hemorrhage the flow of Christians leaving the church, so they hired two Jesuit priests to make up their own interpretation of Bible prophecy. The traditional Protestant view of the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation was called the historicist point of view. This was to say that prophecy covered and paralleled the history of the church as well as laid blueprints of the future of the church. The two Jesuit priests hired by the Church of Rome were Louis de Alcazar and Francisco Ribera. Louis de Alcazar was the author of a Bible interpretation theory called Preterism, which claims that those prophecies were already fulfilled in the past. He claimed that Nero was the Antichrist, and he did this to divert the attention away from the Church of Rome. Francisco Ribera, on the other hand, developed a theory called Futurism, in which he claimed that these prophecies apply way in the future. These two gentlemen made these interpretations up mainly to divert the attention away from the Church of Rome. Preterism did not get too far, but Futurism was later adopted by a pastor named John Darby and it became known as Darbyism. He was a Protestant, not Catholic, but he was embracing Jesuit theology and interpretation of prophecy. This theory did not become popular until a man by the name of Cyrus Ingerson Schofield took it and began to tweak it to form his own modified version. 
He developed a very famous Bible called the Schofield Reference Bible, which had a lot of great cross-references, but he also put in his own futurism philosophy in the commentary sections. In this futurism theory, they believe that there will be a secret rapture of the church before a seven-year tribulation. In the middle of this seven-year tribulation, they believe, the Antichrist will reveal himself in the Middle East. Following this event would be the third coming of Jesus Christ, where he will reign with the saints for a thousand years here on earth. Years later, two gentlemen named Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins wrote a series of 16 best-selling novels called the Left Behind series that deal with the futurist viewpoints of the end of the world. In Tim LaHaye's book, No Fear of the Storm, he actually admits in page 188 that no single verse specifically states that Christ will come before the tribulation. So the Bible warns us of false teachings and false teachers and um, false doctrines, right? And these false doctrines or falsehoods are going to lead people to keep the commandments of man rather than the commandments of God. So although the tribulation is biblical, um, this idea that the rapture would happen first and then there's going to be a second or a, a, a seven year tribulation where people have a second chance to uh, repent and things like that. It's, it's just simply not true. It's simply not biblical at all. You, can, you, you cannot find this seven year tribulation anywhere in the Bible. Nowhere. Now, a lot of people are going are gonna to say, um, well, what about uh, Daniel 9? You know, and, and a lot of Christians are going to use Daniel 9 to convey this so-called prophecy of a seven-year tribulation. But when Daniel 9 is read carefully, when you read Daniel 9 carefully, without any bias, it does not lead you to a seven-year tribulation. Daniel 9 talks about a 2300-day prophecy and... Um, this seven or twenty three hundred day prophecy has nothing to do with this so called seven year tribulation. So, what pastors need to do um, in order for this thing to 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 be true, pastors need to twist um, a whole bunch of scripture. They they need to twist words and verses in the Bible and ignore other passages of the Bible just so that they can get this seven year tribulation to be true. And so many God-fearing Christians have been duped into believing this false theory and false prophecy, false teachings, false doctrines, because, I mean, we got to admit it, we got to face the facts, right? A lot of Christians, a lot of Christians do not thoroughly read their Bibles.